I'm George Day, I'm Head of Economic Strategy here at the ETI. What we're trying to focus on with these scenarios is to look at how can we develop a carbon capture and storage sector in the UK over the period between about now and um, 2030. And what we're trying to look at is the practical questions around what needs to be done to build a sector that's about 10 gigawatts in scale. So that's equivalent to about three large nuclear power stations worth of capacity or about 15 million households uh, worth of power capacity, if you like. So we're looking at what needs to be done to build a sector that big by about 2030. The ETI has uh, done quite a lot of work on the importance of carbon capture and storage to the UK. Um, we think it's really vital technology for the UK's move to a low carbon economy. The reason why we think that is because it has the potential to save tens of billions of pounds off the annual cost of delivering low carbon energy in the future. So it means that low carbon energy could be much cheaper for consumers and less costly for businesses in the future and that's why carbon capture and storage is so important. The reason why it can do that is because it's a very flexible technology so it can help us to produce low carbon power but it can also help by um, enabling us to have other forms of uh, low carbon energy in the future such as low carbon gases, hydrogen and so on. The scenario is really interesting because they tell us that uh, we can actually build a sector uh, for carbon capture and storage about 10 gigawatts in scale by 2030. So it is doable, it is affordable, but it also does show us that we really need to focus very carefully and get on with uh, doing the actions that need to be uh, done to put this in place making sure that we develop the, the first two projects which are going ahead with government support now. So firstly, the Peterhead project which is in Scotland and secondly, the project in Yorkshire known as the White Rose project. What we think needs to happen next is the first two projects uh, get the support and go ahead and get implemented. They're very important projects because they will develop new infrastructure, pipelines and stores and put those in place and make the early investments in those so that other projects can come along later and take advantage of that infrastructure. We then need to make sure that we're investing in appraising storage sites. So this is very important because if uh, new projects come along and they're not certain that there is somewhere where they can actually safely store the uh, CO2 that's captured, then those projects aren't investable, finance can't be put in place to, to make those projects go forwards. And then we need to make sure that we have the, um, the policy resources, the, the support allocated to new projects that come along. So under the Electricity Market Reform Programme, those projects need to be allocated contracts so that they become investable and that they can go forwards into construction and get completed in time. One of the things that comes out of this scenario is, which is really interesting is about how much it costs. We do think it's affordable to build a CCS sector. We think it would cost, in terms of capital expenditure, something between 22 and 31 billion pounds, which sounds a lot, but actually for the scale of uh, development that we're talking about is really quite a reasonable price to pay. In terms of the, uh, the support required under what's called the levy control framework, which was really the government's pot of money to support low carbon technologies. Again, we think there's an affordable amount that can be made available for CCS and to enable this level of development to go forwards. Um, we do think this is uh, likely to be a price that's well worth paying because there are real risks if we fail to develop the CCS sector uh, by 2030. If we don't develop CCS, we will have to do other things to meet carbon targets which are much more expensive and may in fact be much more difficult to achieve. So we'd have to do things like replace gas heating very quickly 
um, which could be expensive and quite risky to implement. Even having done that, we would still have to implement a, a catch-up program of developing CCS after 2030. In terms of the amount that could be captured by the CCS sector by 2030, we think that it's perfectly possible to develop a, a sector that captures around 50 million tonnes of CO2 every year. And that really would be a very significant contribution to reducing UK emissions. If you think about the scale of that in relation to total UK emissions, which is something like 600 million tonnes, so 50 million tonnes uh, reduction is really a very significant uh, contribution to reducing UK emissions. So one of the real positives about carbon capture and storage for the UK is that it not only enables you to deliver low carbon power, it also enables you to develop other forms of low carbon energy such as um, low carbon gases, particularly hydrogen. If you apply carbon capture and storage technology with bioenergy, so with the use of biomass for energy, it means that you can uh, deliver negative emissions because What's happening is you're taking carbon out of the atmosphere when plants are growing and then you're permanently storing that when, once you apply CCS technology. So the net effect is negative emissions in terms of uh, CO2 in the atmosphere.